Yeah, they are. Okay. Just a couple more announcements, just to make sure y'all are aware of things, uh, which I'm sure you are. Uh, yeah, and maybe a little bit of chewing out, too. I don't know. We may or may not do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. We are recording, and we have where we left off, or <clears throat> let me say it this way, where I left off, I was requested that, you know, we have the class at 1230, which we did, okay? This is Jessica Jones, too. Okay. Uh, and I was here all by myself, you know, just talking to myself. They were beginning to bring in people to... Uh, Evaluate my mental capacity you know, because of the talk. Okay. Okay. All right, here comes a few more. Matthias here. All right. All right. Um, so, please listen to Screencast-O-Matic, or YouTube, um, for last time's lecture, because nobody was here to hear it, uh, but we did cover material in 2.5, okay? Um, next, normally my office hours today are some, uh, 12, 12.15 to 3.15, not today though. They'll be 12.15 to 2.15 because we have a faculty meeting at 2.30 over in the Ethel Hall building. So I will be leaving my office sometime after 2.15 to head over there. And normally I have office hours on Friday from 7.45 to 11.45. Not tomorrow. It's Veterans Day. It's a state holiday. The school's closed. Campuses are closed. No one will be here. Don't come. Okay. Next week. Hopefully, knock on wood, we'll be back to normal, or at least sort of normal. Okay. Now, something looks strange about the projection here to me. That doesn't look like it normally does. Everything's sort of blown up, and I don't know why, but we can still live with it. And we started talking about finding the zeros of a polynomial function last time, and... Uh, I'll go over a little bit of what we talked about. Okay. Now, finding the zeros of a polynomial function f of x. Okay? This is a fourth degree polynomial. How many zeros could we have? Four. Up to four real zeros. If you count complex zeros, which we're not going to really do much with, but you need to be familiar with it, there are exactly four zeros. But the key is there's no more than four. So keep that in mind. Now, how do we normally find the zeros? We used to factor, okay? Try factoring that. Pretty tough, okay? So, things to point out here. This polynomial function, notice the coefficients. 1, negative 3, 6, 2, and negative 16. Okay? Not only are those all integral coefficients, you yeah, know, you can tell that, but because they're all integers, they're all real numbers. Now, anytime you have a polynomial function and all the coefficients are real, no complex imaginary parts to them, then you know that you, if you have a complex zero, which except for examples like this, we're really not going to do, um, then those complex zeros are always going to show up as what they call conjugate pairs. Okay? 
Do any of you remember what the conjugate? This is a complex zero. They tell us it's a zero of L. Does anyone remember what the conjugate pair for that would be? This is one plus three I. The conjugate pair would be, the other member of the conjugate pair would be one minus three I. It goes back to really things like factoring the difference of two perfect squares, okay? A plus B times A minus B, okay? Those are conjugate pairs of each other. We use them in irrational numbers. Uh, 7 plus the square root of 5, 7 minus the square root of 5. Those are conjugate pairs. These are complex conjugates here, 1 plus 3i. And because those are real coefficients, you know the other, another 0 here, will be 1 minus 3i. Okay? So it says find all the zeros. They give you one of them. There's three that you don't know. But, since you know this one, you automatically know this one, 1 minus 3i. So now you know two zeros. Now, that wouldn't be the case if one of these coefficients had an i in it. If they do, all bets are off. They don't come in conjugate pair here. All right, now that we know that 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i are zeros, the, this is a... Uh, x plus this is a factor, I'm sorry, x minus this is a factor, and x minus that is a factor. So since we know these two factors, we can now say x minus 1 plus 3i. Now be sure you write those in parentheses like this. And x minus 1 minus 3i. These are factors of, of that polynomial expression. And this is what's so strange here. I've got plenty of screen here, and I'm running out of screen here. I don't know why. Does anyone know enough about projection of this stuff or PowerPoint or anything to... As far as I know, nothing's changed, but someone could have hit this last night. Yesterday it was working fine. The physics guy, I don't think, used it last night, so I don't know why it's not working fine now. But let's proceed, okay? Okay. So if this is a zero, that's a factor. If this is a zero, which we know it is, that's a factor. If we multiply these two factors together, that's a factor, right? So how do we do that? Well, you foil it, exactly. That would be x squared. <coughs> now, this is a part that's a little harder or b more bizarre, but it works. The outer here is x times the minus of that. So that would be, okay, tell me if you don't see why this is good. x times minus 1 would be, Let's do it that way. Uh, minus x and x times plus 3i because you see this minus and that one make a plus. So x times plus 3i would be plus 3ix. By that? Okay, let's do the innards somewhat the same way. x times a minus 1 is minus x, right? x times a minus 3i would be minus 3ix, right? And then when you multiply the last together, okay, uh, that's going to be plus, because it's a minus times a minus, 1, okay, here's another foil here, and this is Kamari, right? See you on here, so you have to see you like my. Okay. Now, this is another foil here. Let's just do it up here. 1 plus 3i times 1 minus 3i. 
That's what we're multiplying, right? This times that. Minus time minus is plus. Okay. Does anyone remember what the product of two conjugates are? Okay, it's, it's the first one squared minus the second one squared. Okay, so this will be 1 squared minus 3i squared. Okay, I know what 1 squared is. That's 1. Minus. Now, what's 3 squared? 9. And what's i squared? Negative 1. So this is 1 plus 3. 9 equal 10. So I'm just going to, since I did the work up there, I'm going to just write it down here and just write that as a plus 10. Yuck. All right, plus 10. All right, now let's combine like terms. That gives us x squared minus 2x. Those are these two. But then you have a plus 3ix and a minus 3ix, that adds to 0. So you lose the imaginary part, and then you got a plus 10. So that's the factor that you get from multiplying those two together. Okay? So if this is a factor, that means it should go into your function, exact numbers. To, oh, goodness gracious, why is this not writing? Ah, yuck. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is write up here. I, I don't know what's wrong with the projection. Well, all right. Y'all got down x squared minus 2x plus 10, right? Okay. I'm going to clear all of the writing off of here so we'll have room to write something else. I don't know why it's doing so strange today. x squared minus 2x plus 10. We're going to divide that long division now into x fourth minus 3x squared cubed, okay, plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 60. Phew. Plenty of terms there, aren't there? Do the long division. What do you do first? x squared into x to the fourth how many times x squared times right everybody see that now you do what multiply x squared times x squared is x to the fourth very good x squared times negative 2x is minus 2x cubed very good x squared times 10 oh that's where's my plus there okay plus 10 x squared times plus 10 is plus 10x squared. Now what do we do? Subtract. With sign numbers, I like to change signs and add. That is how you subtract sign numbers. So I make that a minus, that a plus, and this one a minus. Okay, and add. If you can subtract them without doing that, it's fine. This just minimizes my chance of making errors. There goes the x fourths out of there. And what do we have left here? Negative x cubed, because you're adding now. Negative 4x squared, and what else? Bring down the 2x plus 2x. OK, now we do what? Divide again. x squared into minus x cubed would be x squared into negative x cubed. Negative x. Negative x. Because plus will go in square. Why can't you? I wish I could figure out some way to fix this. And I just don't know how to do it. Um. Sorry, I didn't realize all this is off the screen. Let's do it over here. This is x squared minus 2x plus 10. What's that? 
uh, we're at full screen. That's that's what I checked to begin with. Yuck. Uh, let me pause it and just 